They don't have that hope. They don't have that possibility. They don't have that aspiration. And yet, it is possible for them to receive that in their life from a caring adult who says, you are special, you do matter, I do see something in your life, and I'm going to walk along you, with you every step of the way and watch you succeed. When you get off track, I'm going to kick you in the shins to get you back on the path again. But you can make it. I believe in you. Yes, you. It's your turn. Success is for you. That's instilling hope in the life of a child. And that's the aspiration that can make a difference between a child making that extra step, going the distance, being successful, or quitting at third grade because they failed an I-step test. It all comes down to hope. I'll give you an example. The researchers looked at this at Smart People at Stanford University. They took two groups of students in early grades, first grade. They were tutoring them in math. Both groups received tutoring in math students. One group was told, if you try hard and apply yourself because you're smart, you're going to be successful in math. The other group was just taught the math skill. Wonderfully, both groups improved their math skills. The group that was told that if they tried hard because they had ability, therefore they were hopeful of success, did even better. They were able to measure the difference of hope academically in the lives of those students. And how does that carry on then? For the rest of their lives. You know, uh, when we look at the real issue affecting kids, when we look at kids not doing well in school, when we look at kids living in poverty, when we look at kids who are living without hope, we don't have a child problem, folks. We have an adult problem. Bill Milliken, who started Communities in Schools and wrote the book The Last Dropout, that's his argument. We don't have a youth problem in this country. We have an adult problem. And yes, it starts at home. We're not going to let parents off the hook. They have a unique responsibility and a unique influence in the lives of those children. But if the parents are AWOL, we have a choice. We can curse the darkness of parental disappearance and parental apathy, or we can get involved in the meantime with this fourth grader, with this eighth grader, with this tenth grader who needs a caring adult in their life. We don't have a youth problem. We have an adult problem. As Dennis Brooks, the school superintendent down in New Albany, told me just a few weeks ago, he said, Bill, the kids that we mentor, they don't have even one adult in their life who will say kind words to them. Can you imagine? Forget the research. Forget the data. That summed it up to me perfectly. Too many kids don't have even one caring adult who will say kind words to them. And that's where you come from. You know that. That's why you signed up to mentor. That's why you volunteer. That's why you leave work early. That's why you spend a little less time with your own family to invest in the life of a young person through Starfish. Every student here at Starfish is being mentored by caring people like you. And yes, we still need to talk about parental involvement, but those kids with mentors here at Starfish are much more likely to do better in school, have healthier lives, and get a job to support themselves and raise their family. And oh, by the way, having formerly worked in government, also reduce the burden on welfare, crime, and other public assistance programs. So I would like to say in our property tax environment in the state right now, if all the moral and human dignity reasons aren't enough, we're going to keep your property taxes low. <laughs> Got some financial arguments here we can make as well. And that's how you're stepping in here at Starfish, where every student is now at or above grade level coming from a low-income family with all the challenges that that could entail, 200 out of 200, give or take, are at or above grade level. And oh, by the way, all of the Starfish alums are in college today. Now think about that. We, we have a state where for every, all the kids who start high school as freshmen, only 42 of them will go to college. That's all the kids. So we're already losing 58 kids out of 100 not going to college. And of those 42, only 21 will graduate, by the way, from college. You guys are at 100%. What is with that?